Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and now I'm going to look at capturing with a black magic device and using Media Express or DaVinci Resolve. If, for example, you're using Adobe Premiere for editing, then you're gonna to need to capture in something else. As of Premiere 2024, it doesn't capture through Premiere at all with anything. It doesn't do DV, it doesn't do analog, it doesn't do black magic. So you're gonna need something else. And the options that you'll have are either gonna be Media Express, which is a program that comes with your black magic gizmo, or DaVinci Resolve. Even if you haven't bought the studio version of Resolve, you could actually use the free version and capture and put it into Premiere. So I've got a camera plugged in. It's an old digital eight camera and it's plugged in through composite. And I'm just going to capture using that, using Media Express. And it's a fairly simple program. I don't think it's that intuitive, but it is pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Here you can see I've got log and capture, playback and edit to tape. So so log and capture is capturing stuff. Hello. Playback is playing back stuff that you've captured. Edit to tape is recording back to tape. Now I never use these at all. I never use this to record back to tape. My entire purpose of capturing is to actually get stuff, take it into an editing program and do it. So I never use either of those. Obviously log and capture, you're now ready to capture because you can see a picture, but that's only because I've set it up properly. Now to set it up properly, it's fairly simple. Come over to the menus over here and go to device and make sure that your device is ticked. I'm using a Decklink 4K screen, which has got composite component, S-Video, HDMI and SDI inputs. And it should be there and it should be ticked automatically. If you've got two or three Blackmagic's attached, you can actually choose which one from here, but it should be there and ticked. If it isn't, then your thing isn't installed properly. Very likely the best thing to do, uninstall the drivers, put the drivers back on again. That should be ticked. Then come out to edit and then preferences. First and most important thing, what are you capturing? Now I've set this to PAL, standard definition, which is what's coming out of my camera. If this was set to something else, I don't get a picture. So you've got to get that right in the first place. Next thing about the capturing is you might notice up there, there aren't any settings for whether it's S-Video, Composite, Component, blah de blah de blah You set that in a separate program. And it's this thing, Black Magic Desktop Video Setup. To get to it, Go to the Windows, Apps, Blackmagic, and you can see it's there. It's also in the Windows control panel. Bring up the old fashioned control panel, and this is Windows 11, but old fashioned control panel is still there. You do also have Blackmagic desktop video set up there. It basically gets to this thing, which controls a lot of the very simple settings of Blackmagic. Now you can see here, it tells you what it thinks is coming in. So it thinks it's power coming in. Normally it detects it straight away. Sometimes it gets it wrong, but it thinks it's PAL coming in. Just because it says PAL there doesn't mean you haven't got to set PAL inside of Media Express. And then it's got what the output is and so on. To get to the settings, just click on that button and it comes up with this little dialog box where you can see you've got output, input, audio and so on. But basically the ones I'm interested in here are input and audio. So on the input, where's the picture coming in from? This is kind of the most important one. I've set it to composite. So I've taken a composite feed out of my camera, which is a little yellow phono plug, and I've plugged it to the Y input on the Blackmagic 4K Extreme. Because it's a 4K Extreme, it's got BNCs on it, so I've had to use a BNC to phono adapter. Now on my Decklink 4K Extreme, they're BNCs, they're probably phono plugs on your computer if you've got something like an Intensity Pro, but you're gonna have a red one, a blue one, and a green one, which will be labeled B in, Y in, and R in. Use all three of them if you're using component, which obviously splits the signal up into three bits. If you're using composite, then you just use the Y in, which is the green cable. Now, if you're coming out of something like a Hi8 deck or a VHS deck, then you will have a yellow phono plug for video that goes to the green input on the Blackmagic. It's green because that matches the color of components, which is red, green, and blue but it's also, you use the green one for composite. Composite is where everything's squeezed into one signal. Component's the best quality. S-Video is the next one. Composite is the naffest quality, but if that's all you got, that's what you use. S-Video is better than composite. So if you've got an S-Video socket on your deck or camera, use it. But to get that into a Blackmagic device, you actually have to have an adapter, which normally comes with the Blackmagic device, which takes two phono plugs and converts it into an S-Video socket. The two phonos will be color-coded 
blue and green and you plug them into the blue and green phono plugs on the computer or in my case they're not color coded because they're BNC's so I actually plug them into the Y the Y is the one where the green one goes and the B which is where the blue one goes and that will give me an S video input if you select the wrong thing in here even though you've selected the right format you might not get a picture in the capture window now you can see I've got a picture here but it's black and white and that's because I've got composite going in but I've selected S video if I select component Bosch you can see it's still black and white if I set it to the right thing it's suddenly okay sometimes if you've got it set to S video and not composite actually you won't see a picture at all most of the time it comes out black and white but obviously if you see that first thing to do will be to pop into this program and check you've got the correct input on the audio side well I am coming in through XLRs because I have XLRs on this gizmo so I've got to select that and save and now I should be getting sound oh yeah I've got sound there we are sound is now coming through as well so now I'm set up to capture there are other settings in here so for example if you go to conversions there is an input conversion thing I could bring in standard definition and record it as high definition I never bother with any of these conversions because I can do better conversions in my editing program so I always leave that at none so literally I just fiddle with the audio input and the video input you'll also notice I'm changing stuff in here with the Blackmagic program open which you're quite happy to do all you do is change it save pop back to the other program and it actually takes effect so you don't have to close this down to make it notice stuff but that's it I am now set I am now ready to capture next question is where is it going to go you need to set this before you start capturing if I go back to preferences you notice it's got capture audio and video here and capture still frames and that is going to the C drive like pretty much everything it defaults to the C drive and you want to change it make up a folder capture still frames well I'm going to set that one as well but you know I'm not really going to do that and I'll come back to those in a sec so there we are. I've set that going I'm ready to capture I then click the capture button and there we are we are now capturing to disk if there are dropped frames so you know as it's capturing something goes wrong it'll probably stop capturing but generally you'll do that you will let it get on with it then you'll click the capture button again and it stops and now I have a clip up in my list double click on it and it starts playing it you notice it pops straight to the playback tab and it works and I can see the sound and the levels going yep everything's hunky-dory and that's really it it's pretty simple you might want to change the names and that kind of thing so if I come back to here you'll notice I've got a whole bunch of different things down here to give a name a description a tape name and so on at the moment I can't type anything in there what I've got to do is click on these things to add in a prompt when I capture so if I click on that and then start capturing it prompts me for a name there we are but yeah I'd like to actually call it something other than non type I don't want to type it afterwards I don't want to be prompted every time I capture no I want it to actually name it right now so logically you'd come to here and you start typing and it doesn't let you type so you might think well I've got to click that so I can at least name it when I capture no you don't actually because that's what the rest of this lot will do so if I come down to description and click the plus button I can actually type something in there then you'll notice the name changes so that's how you change the name you start typing things in here that's literally going to give it a name I could also give it a tape number and I could give it a scene number and you'll notice it's actually adding things into the name if you're using resolve resolve can take these names and then extract scene numbers and tape numbers tapes and stuff from them but that's how you would change this and if you've got those selected and you go to scene two you can just click that and it goes to scene two scene three and so on but apart from that it's fairly straightforward so you can capture a piece of video you can use that to take a still image if you want to it'll go wherever I set my still image preferences up here the only other things you've got are these options here stop capture if drops frames are detected if I have that ticked if a frame is dropped it will stop capturing because again I'm capturing ropey sources sometimes that does cause it to drop frames randomly so I tend to untick that because then I can carry on capturing stuff and I can sort it out later on and then the other thing down here is use anamorphic so if I was to tick that I'm now doing widescreen capture as opposed to 4x3 
Now, the other thing you've got to set apart from the project format is the capture format. In other words, what kind of file is it going to make? And this is one area where, say, if I had Grass Valley Edius, I'd use that because it has Grass Valley HQX, which is a very good capture format. The options here are quite limited. If I click on that, you can see the different options I've got. New ones are these QuickTime ones, which didn't used to be there, but mostly they're uncompressed. Now, there's nothing wrong with uncompressed, but they take up quite a bit of space. If I'm capturing standard definition, it won't be as bad as, say, high definition. If I try and capture high definition uncompressed onto a regular hard drive, it's probably going to go wrong because the hard drive probably can't keep up. It should be able to keep up with standard definition uncompressed, but it's still going to take up much more space than it really ought to. So your other options, like on the AVI files, I've got three types of uncompressed files. There's 8-bit or 10-bit. So you should be familiar with color spaces and you know, basically 10-bit is better color than 8-bit. So ideally you'd do that. Or then again with ropey sources, maybe you won't even notice. Obviously 10-bit has more information so it takes up more space. YUV is the format video is generally saved into. RGB is how you save still images. It kind of treats the color a little bit differently. So you might notice a slight difference when you actually play the stuff back. Generally, I avoid using the uncompressed ones anyway, because I think they're just a bit of overkill. So apart from uncompressed, you've also got Motion JPEG and QuickTime DVC Pro. And probably that's the one I'd go for. I mean, certainly at the moment, we're on the latest version of Adobe 2024, and it's having real problems loading up AVI files, which is obviously some kind of bug they're going to fix. So I would definitely go for QuickTime. QuickTime DVC Pro is like making a QuickTime DV file. It's a pretty good kind of file. It won't be too big, but it'll be fairly uncompressed. So I'd do that and then start capturing and it would make for me a QuickTime DV file. That's going to load up into pretty much every editing program, certainly Premiere, Resolve and Edius. The other option would be Motion JPEG. So that makes an AVI file up, which is Motion JPEG. Again, that should load up into pretty much everything. It's just Motion JPEG is a really, really old format and it's fixed. So if you've ever made JPEG files with Photoshop or anything like that, you'll know that you can change the amount of compression. You can press it too much, you start getting little squiggly lines around certain things if there's a lot going on. And Motion JPEG is exactly the same. And inside Blackmagic, there is no way you can change the quality setting of Motion JPEG. So you might get little squiggly artifacts in really busy things or things that are waving fields of grass. It really doesn't like green and blue. So that's why, in preference, I would actually use the QuickTime one because I think it's a better format, DVC Pro 50. That is quite a recent addition. Now, I happen to be using the latest version of the drivers as I make this, which is 14.0.01. If you're using something like Edius, those aren't the recommended drivers. It's recommending something like 12.4. Might not be there if you're using 12.4, because I can't remember when this came in. But as it's there, that's the one I would use in preference. Other option I've got is DPX 10-bit. That's a whole bunch of still images. And you'll only use it if you really want to use DPXs because actually trying to manage video that's split up into a whole bunch of still images is a real pain in the posterior. So like I said, I would, in preference, use that one. Click, capture. Now I'm busy capturing stuff into a decent format that just about everything should be able to manage. In fact, I've only got one program on my computer that wouldn't manage that, which is TMPEG, and I'm using TMPEG 6. I'm not using the latest one, and that won't read QuickTime files unless you install QuickTime. And of course, we don't install QuickTime these days because the FBI said it's a bad idea and it's a security risk. But most programs will actually load in those files. So we are, I've now captured three clips. You can't tell that one's the motion JPEG one. That one's the QuickTime one. Honestly, can't tell the difference. And those little squiggly line artifacts I mentioned on the motion JPEG, I can't see it. But then yeah, there's not a lot going on. And it is a very ropey signal from an old cheap Digital 8 camera. But that's it. I have captured stuff with Media Express. Once I close this down, I will get up a message saying, do you want to save the project? Which, you know, the project is this. I never have any use for Media Express projects, to be perfectly honest. Literally, I would capture the stuff and then load it up into my editing program separately. 
but if you want to, you can save the project. Anyway, I hope you found that video useful. In the next video, I'll look at capturing inside of DaVinci Resolve. Don't forget to visit my website, www.dvctraining.co.uk for more information. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.